Hey guys, if you're looking for some awesome Class A RVs under 30 feet long, stick around. We found some great floor plans. Hey guys, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we write tons of blog articles on our three websites all about RVing too. So if you'd like to join our newsletter and be informed every week with our newest videos and blog articles, just click the link above or go check out the show notes down below. Sign up for the newsletter that over 100,000 people a week receive, and you'll be one of the most well-informed RVers on the road. And when you sign up, you also get a free subscription to RV Today magazine, which comes out eight times a year, all for free. We hope to see you there. But without any further ado, let's get started with our reviews of awesome Class A RVs under 30 feet long. This Class A RV is the Holiday Rambler Admiral, model number 28A. It has a gross vehicle weight rating of 16,000 pounds, a gross combined weight rating of 21,000 pounds, a hitch weight of 8,000 pounds. It measures in at 29 feet, 3 inches long, and it can sleep up to 6 people. When you first walk into this RV, on the right-hand side is where your living and dining areas are located. Of course, the driver's cab is all the way up front. And then we wrap on around through the kitchen area. And then behind me is where the bedroom and bathroom are located. Now our first impression when we walked in this RV is that it feels really nice and roomy in here. I love all the cabinet colors, countertop colors, furniture, it all really pops and works well together. It looks very luxurious in here. Now starting all the way at the front here, we have the driver's cab area. This sits on a Ford chassis and so you know, you have a really nice dash access up here. You have some cup holders built in and everything you need to make driving really nice and easy. There's also these captain's chairs up front, which do swivel all the way around. So you can have them face into the rig if you would like. And on top of that, you can mount a little table here between the two chairs. So if you need additional uh, eating area or just a place to sit here and relax, if you have friends over and stuff, they can put their drinks on the table and everyone will be comfy and have a good time. Now up top here, there is a bunk that will drop down. We can't put it down right now because we're at, that, at the RV show and they don't want us messing around with that stuff. But if you were to lower it down, you would end up with a bunk. It's actually bigger than what you can see here, but it would end up being almost 60 inches wide, probably in the neighborhood of 56 inches wide. And then the length on it is about 80 inches long. So you have a residential full-size bed up there. Two adults could easily sleep on that. Certainly a couple kids could sleep on it as well. They also have some little hooks in the ceiling here, which let, lets me know that there is a cargo net that you could mount. And that way you don't have to worry about the kiddos falling out of bed overnight if they're sleeping up there. There's also a little ladder that's stowed away that you can use to climb up into the over cab bunk. Now, as we, ro as we roll on around out of there, we have these really nice theater chairs here. These things are very, very comfortable. You just pull your little handle out, relax, kick back. The TV's right across from here over top of the dinette area. So it's nice and comfy and luxurious too. And then you've got a little spot here to throw your remote controls in there so you don't lose them. Now, just above the recliners, there's a really nice big window here, and there's a little shelf behind them here, so you could put some pictures or succulents, whatever you're into, on your little shelf and decorate in here and make it nice and homey. We're working on that in our RV right now. That's why I know some of these terms. Anyway, there's also a receptacle on that end behind the recliner there, and there's another receptacle here. So if you need to charge any electronic devices while you're relaxing, you can certainly do that as well. There's also a couple lights here with a switch in the middle to turn them on and off. And then you have this really large storage cabinet. Both doors open up and it's one big cabinet in between. So tons of room up there to stow things away. The dinette table is located just across from the theater seating and you know four people could sit here pretty comfortably and enjoy a meal you might be a little bit cramped but it's not too bad at all there are a couple of cup holders built into the table too but then just above the table you'll notice there's a couple of windows here and then the tv is mounted here as well so whether you're enjoying a meal or reclining in your theater seating you can see the tv very very easily 
Now, underneath of the booth that I'm in, there is this little door that you can use to access some storage under there. And there's also a USB and receptacle ports underneath of the other booth. So if you're working at your table or trip planning or what have you, you can plug in your computer if needed. Also, I wanna point out that this dinette table will drop down and this does create another bed. And if we do that, let's see here, you will end up with about 68 inches by uh, 42 inches for a bed. So an average size adult, a couple of small kids could fit in this spot rather easily. Now here we are in the kitchen area and this is a pretty good size countertop area in here, especially for a rig that's under 30 feet long. They did a nice job with the kitchen setup. Up top here we have nice cabinet doors. They have a glass, smoky glass inlay in them too. It just looks very nice. And there's even an adjustable shelf inside of here. Next to that, we have this really big residential sized microwave oven. I mean, this is huge. You could cook a lot of stuff in there, no problem. Down below that, we have our three burner range, which is all propane. And then below that, you have a real oven. It's not really huge, but you could still throw a pizza in there bake some cookies or whatever. And then there's a little drawer down below for additional storage. Now, just next to the cooktop, they have a nice big double bowl sink in here. And uh, we've been hearing a lot of debates from people about whether you should have a single or double bowl sink. They, a lot of people think a single bowl is easier for washing up pots and pans. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from you. Now, they also have a nice big gooseneck faucet in here with an integral sprayer. And we're seeing more and more chrome fixtures uh, both in the residential market and in the RV market. So I guess Chrome is back. I remember when it went out of style and everybody switched over to the gold fixtures a long, long time ago. And then we got into brush nickel and all those different colors, but now we're back to Chrome. So here we are. We even have Chrome door handles on all the cabinets. Now down below your sink, you have a nice big storage area and then you have a bank of drawers for storing all your kitchen utensils. There's also a receptacle here. So if you do have coffee pot, blender, things like that, you can plug it in. There's also another receptacle located underneath of this cabinet for those items as well. Finally, across from the kitchen area with the sink and countertop, all that is where your refrigerator is. This is a good size fridge too. This is a 12 volt fridge, plenty of room in the freezer and the refrigerator. 12 volt runs on your battery and then your shore power powers up your battery and that's what controls your refrigerator so it's not running on propane when you're traveling down the road. Next to that, we have a really nice big pantry cabinet in here. These are all fixed shelves, they're not adjustable, but they do go in and put a little indoor outdoor carpeting on the top of every shelf so it just makes it really nice and when things are in there, they're not banging up and down on the wood, it makes it a little quieter when you're driving up and down the road. So here we are in the bedroom, all the way in the back of this rig, and it's a nice big bed back here. Let's see how big this thing is. I think it's a king size bed too. So it is, oh, it's just short. It's about 78 inches and about 72 inches wide. So it would be considered a short king size bed. It's just off by a couple inches, but nice big roomy bed back here. Nice headboard configuration. There's a window on either side of the bed too, so you can get a breeze back here. There's also a window behind me where I'm standing. In addition to all that, there are little uh, sideboards or uh, side shelves on each side of the bed. I guess you can call them end tables, but there's also a receptacle with USB ports on each of the end tables. And then you have these reading lights overhead that can swivel around so you can direct them where you'd like them to be. There's also a couple of speakers under here with a radio control in the bedroom. So if you want to listen to some music at night while you're drifting off to sleep, you can do that too. Over top here, you have even more storage room. This is an open cabinet from one end to the other with two doors to access that storage. On my right here is where your TV is located. They did a really nice job building this into the wall. And when they build them into the wall like that, it just makes it a little easier when you go to get around your bed. You don't have a TV hanging off the wall, getting in your way. And finally, we have the wardrobe cabinet and some clothes storage here too, which is at the entry to the bedroom. Nice look. I mean, these 
chrome handles with the dark wood and the mirrored cabinets just look really nice. Inside of here, this is a huge storage cabinet. It's got a bar up top for your hanging items and then you could even store things below that. And then finally, you have a bank of drawers down below to stow away even more of your clothes. Now here we are in the bathroom and I'm standing in the shower like I usually do. And uh, it's quite a step up to get into this shower. I was really surprised to see that, but man, that's like, what do you think? 13, 14 inches to step up and over and into the shower. Now, as far as ceiling height goes in here, I got a few inches over my head. Let's see how much we got. I'm 5'11", as you know, and, and we have about six feet, five inches of headroom in the shower. The whole entire RV has six feet, 10 inches of headroom. So, you know, it might work out well for some of you taller folks. Now the shower itself is very compact. I feel a little bit cramped in here, but you know, all in all, I think you would be fine. It does have these triple glass doors that will close. So you don't have to worry about water getting out of the shower. Like if you had a shower curtain, I would definitely be hitting it and water would be going out. Uh, but you have your chrome fixtures in here. It looks really nice. I like the surround that they have in here. And then of course you have a little spot for your soap and shampoo. Now just outside of the shower, nice big roomy medicine cabinet here, your vanity top and faucet below that. And then you've got storage under the sink and there's a receptacle on the side of the cabinet if you need that too. Now here I am sitting on the commode and Susan is standing in the shower now, but as you can see, we have a corner cabinet over my head for additional storage. There's a towel ring over here, TP holder to my left. As far as passing the elbow test goes, even with the door closed, I'm pretty close. So here I am outside the RV and they have two smaller storage compartments here, as well as a larger storage compartment to my left. It's a pretty good size. You could fit a lot of your camping gear in there. And then above you have this gigantic TV. You even have more USB and receptacles out here. You've got some speakers built in. Very nice setup. Now these RVs are jammed in here for the RV show, so we can't get to the other side to see what the storage looks like over there, but I would imagine there's a couple storage compartments there too. This Class A RV is the Thor Vegas model number 26.1. It has a gross vehicle weight rating of 14,500 pounds, a GCWR of 22,000 pounds. The hitch weight is 8,000 pounds. It measures in at 27 feet, two inches long, and it can sleep up to four people. When you first walk into this Class A RV on the right-hand side, you have the driver's cab. Then we roll around through the kitchen area and living area. Behind me here is the bathroom and bedroom. Our first impression when we walk into this rig is that, you know, it looks bigger than it really is, I think. I mean, it's a 27 foot RV and it's just feels pretty spacious in here. It's kind of surprising. But anyway, up front here, we have the driver's cab. These seats are very, very comfortable. We have the same ones in our Class A RV and I can tell you I can drive for hours and just be as comfortable as can be. Over top here, is a bunk bed that will drop down. We're at an RV show right now and they don't want us to pull the pins and show you how it works. But this entire bed up here comes down to just over top of the seats. And then there's a ladder that goes here and the kids can climb up there and sleep in the bed. Now it's the same size bed that we have in our rig, maybe a little smaller. Let me see if I can get a measurement on it. Yeah, this is about 40 inches wide by whoops come on tape measure cooperate uh, about 88 inches across and so you know you could definitely get two kids up there maybe one adult it's not quite as wide as the one that we have in our class a but it works great we've spent the night up there with the grandkids many times and it works just fine now as we wrap on around behind here you have a nice couch here with seat belts on it and these couches also recline back a little bit so you can chill out and relax. The backs don't really go back, but at least you can extend your legs and sit here and relax. Straight across from me is where the TV is located, just above the doorway. So you have a good view of that from here as well. And you'll notice that there is no dinette in here, and that's because there's a separate table with two poles that mount right here, and then this is where you would sit for your dinette table. So in our opinion, this rig's really kind of meant 
for two people, but you could get three or four in here. And then if you did that, you'd probably just need to eat outside most of the time. Or if it was a rainy day, you could set your table in here, bring a couple of camp chairs in, and then you'd have four places for people to sit and eat. Another option that you could do is there's also another table that mounts in between these two chairs. There's a pole space in the middle here. Table sits right on top. Both of these chairs swivel all the way around so they could face the table or they could face into the rig and it opens up more seating for everyone and it creates another place for people to sit down and eat. Now just behind the recliner you have a nice big window here. You can open both of these bottom windows and get a nice cross breeze blowing through here. You've also got a couple of puck lights that are under here to light things up. You can turn these off individually or they'll both turn on and off together. There's also a receptacle on each side under here. So if you're sitting here at your couch and you need to plug in something, maybe to charge your computer or something like that, you can easily do that. Just above here, we have these really nice cabinet doors. The hardware is very nice. And inside of this storage cabinet, it is lit up in here and there's a little switch under here that turns that light on and off. But that's a really nice feature to have inside your cabinetry. Now, just across from the couch, I just mentioned it a second ago, is where the TV is located over top of the door. Just next to that, you have the main control panel for the entire rig. This takes care of everything from temperature controls to lights to fans, everything you need to operate your rig. Now, the kitchen area here has these nice big cabinets up top, and I, I just think they look really nice. They're sleek, they're modern looking, they're two-tone, they've got the accent trim on them. Just a really good look. And then when you open it up, you've got some shelving in here. Now these shelves are adjustable in here, which is really fantastic. You can move the clips up and down. We have the same deal in our rig and it really makes a nice difference for us. Down below that, we've got our nice big round single bowl sink in here. It's got like a more of a polished chrome look to it with the faucet and everything. And then it's got an integral sprayer that goes with it. Just very pretty and it looks good. You can put your cover on and expand your countertop space. We have a tower of power here in the middle. So if you want to set up a coffee maker or toaster, you can plug it in right there. And then finally, we have a two burner propane stove in here with, you know, a glass backed. So that'll keep some splatter from going there. There's really nothing on this side wall. So you might want to make your own backsplash and cover this area because things will tend to splatter on the wall and you don't want to mess up your wallpaper. Just behind the countertop though, we have a nice big uh, window that keeps some, keep some natural light coming in here. And then you've also got some puck lights under here to keep things lit up for you as well. Now down below your cooktop, you have a convection microwave oven here. We have one in our rig and we absolutely love it. You can cook and bake and do everything in there. And then you've got a bank of drawers here for all your kitchen utensils. And finally, a trash can closet or more storage, however you'd like to use it. Now, directly across from the kitchen and next to where the couch is, is where the refrigerator is located. This is a big 12 volt fridge that's in here, which is great. It's a good size fridge. Um, certainly enough room to keep ice in the freezer plus some frozen pizzas and then you can stock your fridge and you'll be in good good shape down below that we have another full extension drawer here so you can store even more things below the fridge so here we are in the owner's bedroom and this is a really nice looking bedroom setup back here i mean it just looks a little bit luxurious you've got the nicer cabinets in the middle with the wardrobe cabinets on each end nice headboard that's built in and everything. And then you've got these, you know, you have one really nice end table and another carpet end table over here. So all in all, it looks pretty great to me. Now the length on this bed is about 74 inches and the width on it is 60. So we would consider this to be a short queen size bed, but nonetheless, you got a short queen in here and that should be plenty of room to get a peaceful night's rest. Now over top here, you have nice deep storage over top. And then underneath you have a couple of puck lights that you can turn on and off. On each side of the headboard, there are also um, electrical receptacles, USB ports, and 12 volt ports as well. So you could plug in virtually anything and charge it up while you're sleeping overnight. And if you need a CPAP machine, that end might be a great place to set it and you will be all good to go. Now the wardrobe cabinets in here are nice and tall. This is also where the poles will store away for the two, the dinette table and the table that goes between the drivers and passenger seats up front. 
And then uh, on the other side, it's the same deal. There's a bar over top and you'll find the table in there that goes between the chairs up front too. Now, down below, you do have a couple of short drawers that are in here, so you can stow some things away there. And then I also wanna point out on each side of the bedroom, there are windows in here that you can crack open, get some nice cross breeze through here. Plus, there is a skylight that opens up in here as well. Now, there's not a fan in there, but at least you can open it and get some airflow that way too. Now, they've gone ahead and built the TV in here in a great location and it's actually built into the wall and the plugs are up top here for your electric and cable and we like the way they've done this because when you're coming out of bed in the morning and you need to scooch by here if the table was if the tv was just mounted on the flat wall it would stick out or protrude into the room much further but being built into the wall it just makes it a little easier to scooch on by now the bathroom in this rig is in the middle of the rig and it's located between the bedroom and the living area. And what they've done here is they've split the bathroom up. So on one side of the hallway is where the shower is located. On the other side of the hallway, you'll find your vanity and your toilet in there. The advantage of that is, is that someone can be taking a shower in here while someone else is in the other bathroom, putting on their makeup, blow drying their hair or using the bathroom. So, you know, it helps out with people being able to use the bathroom at one time. The shower here is a good size. It feels pretty comfortable in here. I like the surround that they have on the walls. It looks nice, like a faux marble kind of finish. And then in the back corner, there are three shelves here for shampoo and soap and things like that. Now they've gone and put a shower curtain in here and the bar for the shower curtain does sort of go out into the hallway a little bit just to allow a little more space in the shower. I, you guys know, if you've seen any of my videos, I always prefer a retractable shower door or at least the curtain on a top and bottom track to help keep the curtain from blowing in on you or blowing out of the shower and getting water on the floor. So, um, but this is easy to replace. You can buy your own retractable shower door on the internet. They make them in custom sizes. You just measure it up, order it, and install it yourself. It's a piece of cake. Let's head across the hallway and take a look at the rest of the bathroom. So now Susan's standing in the shower and I'm on the other side of the hallway in the rest of the bathroom. But I do wanna point one thing out really quick. When you open the door here, it opens all the way up and it actually clicks on a magnet and that creates some separation or privacy from the living part of the rest of this RV. There's also a full length mirror mounted on the back of the door. So when you're getting ready, you can see yourself and how wonderful you look before you head on out into the campground where nobody cares what you look like. But Never mind. Um, I don't want to start. A, I don't want to start a battle about that. Anyway, inside the bathroom, it looks really nice in here. You've got this big medicine cabinet in here with these big mirrors on it. It's really nice and bright. It's fantastic. If you're getting ready in the morning, this is perfect. Down below, nice size vanity sink with plenty of countertop space. You also have a towel ring here and there's an electrical receptacle above the counter. So if you need to plug in your hair dryer, curling iron, whatever, you're all set to do that. Down below, we have some storage under the sink and we also have some open storage behind that. And finally, when I'm sitting on the commode in here, I'm not gonna pass the uh, elbow test in this bathroom, but it's big enough that you do not feel cramped when you're sitting in here. Now for you folks that wanna know if you can get to the kitchen and bathroom when the slide is in, I can definitely tell you that yes, everything is fully accessible. This slide out that the fridge and the sofa sit in is only about 18 inches deep. And so when you move this sofa in 18 inches, that moves it into right about here and you can tell that you would have plenty of room to go from the front of the RV to get back to the bathroom or access the fridge. So if you wanna stop for lunch or a bathroom, bathroom break, no problem. So here we are outside of this Class A RV. And as you can see, there are three storage compartments on this side of the rig. And in the back of the RV, you have this really nice big storage compartment that you can access from the back of the RV or the driver's side. One other nice feature outside this RV is they have a nice built-in grill back here. It's a Greystone 25-inch griddle. This is huge. I mean, you could cook for your whole family and mine on here, so we'll be stopping by for dinner. This Class A RV is the Coachman Euro, model number 25EU. It has a gross vehicle weight rating of 16,000 pounds, a gross combined weight rating of 23,000 pounds, a hitch weight of 8,000 pounds, and it measures in at 28 feet, four inches long while being able to sleep up to three people. 
When you first walk into this RV, on the right-hand side is where the driver's cab is located. Then we wrap on through the living area and into the kitchen area. Behind me on my right, your left, is where the bathroom is located and the owner's bedroom. Our first impression when we walk inside of this coach is that it's got that sleek, modern, European style to it. Very nice, very, very modern looking. We really like it a lot. Now up front here is where the driver's cab is located. This is built on a Ford F53 chassis. It has the V8 7.3 liter engine in it, which is also known as the Godzilla engine. We have the same exact engine on the same exact chassis in our Class A motorhome, and that motor is fantastic. We've towed the Jeep up and over the Rocky Mountains with that thing, and it has done very, very well for us, even though it's a gasser, so it costs less to run it. Uh, but also up front here, you'll notice there's plenty of room. It's got a nice stylish design. In the middle here, look at the size of this tablet that's here that you have for your GPS and everything. Very, very cool and very large. That's the largest screen I think we've ever seen. Uh, in the passenger seat, there's a nice desk that pulls out towards you from the dashboard, and then you've got a 12 volt and a USB port so you can plug in your computer or whatever you might be working on while you're rolling down the road in the passenger seat. Now you might notice one thing that's missing and that is the over cab bunk. A lot of Class A RVs have that feature, but this one does not, but it really gives you a lot of headroom in here and it feels very open and roomy. Now just behind the driver's seat, is sort of where your entertainment area is located, if you will. This is where you've got your TV mounted up on the wall. So it's in a great location because you can see it from the couch located directly across from it. So you can be nice and comfy sitting here watching TV. Now below that, we have a nice sized window that opens up here. And then you've got these two bucket seats here. Now this, this particular RV does not have a dinette in it per se, but instead, it's got this table that swings around and it's not really quite set up. I just popped it in here really quick to show you, but the table can be a little higher. And then two people can sit here and eat on the TV or you could sit across from here and still use the same table. Maybe you wanna sit there and watch TV while you're eating your meal. So this table really serves a lot of needs inside of this RV. Now, right across from the bucket seats and the TV location is where the couch is located in here. Up above that, you've got some really nice big storage cabinets up here. Underneath of the cabinets, there are a couple of reading lights and then a really nice big window here. We've got all the shades drawn right now because we're inside of the dealer's showroom. Uh, but nonetheless, you can open up open these up and see right outside, open the window and get a nice cross breeze in here, whatever you like to do. I'd also like to point out they've got all the windows really nicely framed in with this wood trim that goes all around them. So it's just a nice touch, gives it a different feel inside of here. A lot of times you'll see like a fabric type, uh, I forget what the word is, that goes around the windows. I guess it's called a valence, uh, but they did it in this nice wood trim and I think it looks really sharp. Now the couch that's sitting here is a nice comfy couch, but this also can jackknife out into a, another bed. And if you did that, you'd be able to sleep, you know, a little kid here, maybe two if they're really little, but you've got about 53 inches by 41 inches of space. And so, like I said, a couple of little kids, maybe one medium sized kid uh, would be able to sleep on the couch. Now, just beyond the living area and dinette area is where the kitchen is located. And on the very side of this kitchen cabinet, there is a receptacle here. And we assume this would be used if you are sitting in the living area and you may be working on your computer, doing some trip planning. You could plug in right there and take care of all your electronic devices that way. Now, up above in the kitchen, they have these really nice cabinets here. Fantastic hardware. Everything just opens right up for you and then it's got like a soft close kind of deal with it. So it's really pretty nice, but a lot of storage space up top. And there's also this little shelf right here where you can store some things, maybe some spices and stuff like that could go up there. And then you've got this nice big countertop area here. Now, first of all, you'll note that you've got a big rectangular sink in here, and then it's got a gooseneck faucet with a separate sprayer. And as I've mentioned in some of our other videos, a lot of times the RVs that are on the dealer lot or even at an RV show, they'll tape or rubber band these baggies around because 
all the plumbing is winterized, so it has the antifreeze in here, and they don't want this dripping everywhere. So they put little plastic baggies on to keep everything neat and clean. Now, when you're moving along the countertop in here, one thing that's really nice to note is it's got these windows over top of the countertop location. You've also got a tower of power here, so if you need to plug in a toaster, coffee pot, blender, toaster oven, whatever you need, you're good to go. There's also a USB and a USC port here for you as well. Then you've got this really nice range hood. This is very residential looking, very upscale. I like it a lot. And then below that, beautiful side splash, two burner induction cooktop. Be aware you'll need to buy the proper type of pots and pans that will work on an induction cooktop. And then below that, you've got a microwave oven. Down below your microwave, really large drawer here for all your pots and pans storage. And then you've got a couple drawers here for all of your kitchen utensils. And then this last drawer is really kind of a neat setup. It's a big drawer that pulls out. And it's got two trash cans in here. I guess one for trash, maybe one for recycle. And then all of your cleaning supplies can go in this last tote. Now, right across from the cooktop is where your refrigerator is located in here. This is a good size fridge. Plenty of room in the fridge up top. And then down below in your freezer, you've got plenty of room down there too. It's in a dangerous spot if you have little kids because they will be able to access the popsicles very easily. Now, there's one last feature in this kitchen that I know some of you are absolutely going to love. Like me, I hate washing dishes. So, they actually have a really good sized dishwasher inside of this unit. And um, it's pretty rare that we find a dishwasher in a smaller Class A RV, but this one has one. And so let us know in the comments down below, would you like to have a dishwasher inside of your RV or is hand washing the dishes in the kitchen sink okay by you? We'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I'm sure it'll be a big debate in the comments, so we look forward to reading all of that. Uh, also up top here, as we move back towards the bedroom area, we have a very large pantry cabinet on one side, so you can store all your dry goods in there. And then on the other side is a wardrobe cabinet. This has a bar up on the top, so you can hang your garments in here. There's still room below that for you to store some things in here as well. And then directly across from that, we have another very large cabinet here, which is also a wardrobe cabinet with a bar up top where you can hang things. So you've got plenty of room for all of your clothes storage. Now here we are all the way in the back of this rig and in the bedroom. This looks like a pretty good sized bed in here. Let's see exactly how big it is. I'm pretty curious. So it's about 78 inches long and 70 inches wide. So it's almost a residential king size bed. If it was just two inches longer, we would call it a residential king, but it's an RV king because it's like two inches short. But still, it's a great size bed. Even some of you taller folks will be able to be very comfortable in here. Now, you'll also notice on each side of the bed, there's a window to get you plenty of light in here. Over top of the headboard, you've got three cabinets that open with plenty of storage. Underneath of that, you've got a couple of reading lights. So if you want to lay in bed at read at night, you're certainly able to do that as well. On each side of the bed, there is a small end table and there's also a little step up. So if, for you shorter folks, if you get a tall mattress in here, you can use the step up to get up onto your bed. And then on each side of the bed, there is a receptacle and USB ports. So you can plug in your electronic devices overnight and be charged up and ready to go in the morning. Now, right behind me here is another window and uh, this can open up. It's also your, your exit, emergency exit window should you ever need that, hopefully you never do. And then behind me here is where your TV is mounted on the wall. And so it's a perfect spot, it's out of the way. You can tilt it a little bit, it's in the locked position right now and be able to watch your TV while you drift off to sleep at night. Now here we are in the bathroom back here, and it's a decent sized bathroom, and I'm standing in the shower as I usually do. You guys know I'm 5'11", so let's see how much headroom we have back here in the shower. And we are looking at, up into the skylight, we have six feet, seven inches of height back here. The normal headspace throughout the entire RV from the floor to the ceiling is 80 inches long. So that would be eh, six feet eight inches. I should have known that right off the top of my head, but I didn't. Anyway, outside of the shower, well, inside the shower, you've got a sprayer here that's, 
you know, pretty nice setup. And then behind me here, you've got a place for your shampoo and soap to go. I love the fact that they have glass doors in here, so it keeps the water inside the shower. Outside of the shower, you have this really nice big mirror here with the backlighting. So it's a great setup for you ladies getting ready in the morning. I mean, Susan and I could both stand here and each see each other. It's really big. Then you have this nice vanity with a really cool design for the sink and a faucet. There's storage underneath of the sink and then of course open storage off to the side of that. And then finally there's a little corner cabinet in here above the commode so you have a little bit of extra storage there. So this was this is what it would be like if you're in here using the commode with the door shut. Susan's standing in the shower and I'm sitting on the commode. Plenty of room in here. I don't feel claustrophobic at all. I'm not really going to pass the elbow test in this one, but it feels nice and roomy and there is plenty of space in here. Now outside of this RV, there are a couple of storage compartments. They're both on the camp side of the RV, which makes them both very, very convenient. So you can unload chairs, grills, you know, whatever you need for all your outdoor living out here. And they're lighted compartments as well. Hey guys, let us know which one of these Class A RVs you like the most and why in the comments down below. We would love to hear what you have to say about all three of these awesome models. But if you want to check out even more Class A RVs under 30 feet, just click the box down below. And Susan and I will see you in the next video.